Hello, welcome to Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem. In this video, I will explain the very basics of using Copernicus Browser. The purpose of Copernicus Browser is to enable anyone to look at Sentinel satellite images, download data, and perform simple analysis tasks. Start by registering at dataspace.copernicus.eu. You can also use the browser anonymously, but not all tools will work. Open browser.dataspace.copernicus.eu. This is what you will see. As a start, set the language you prefer here on the top left. Then log in. For a moment, you can close the left toolbar and browse around. What you see is a mosaic of Sentinel-2 imagery from the last three months regularly updated. If you click on the Layers button in the top right corner, you can choose alternative backgrounds such as OpenStreetMap, Voyager, and Light. Below these layers, you can see some checkboxes for additional vector layers, water boundaries, contours, roads, borders, and place labels. These will display also on top of the satellite imagery that you are browsing. In the top right corner, we also have a search box. This allows you to search specific locations or even to enter coordinates in decimal degrees directly. The other buttons in the right toolbar are for creating areas, lines and points of interest, and also for measuring distance and area. The next ones are for downloading an image, creating a time lapse, looking at the 3D visualization and calculating a histogram. These are only enabled if you load an image. So let's load an image. If you click the big green button on the left, it's going to bring you directly to the latest Sentinel-2 image of your study area. Beside this, you have a calendar panel that opens up to show all images available in the month. The panel has a cloud coverage slider. And as you will see, all images with cloud cover below the set threshold will be highlighted in blue, and the other images will be gray. Instead of a single image, you can also choose an image mosaic created from all the images in the last month compared to the selected date and the time range where you specify the start and end dates yourself and it takes the best image within this period. The mosaicing order lets you select what counts for you as the best image, the most recent image, the least recent image or the one with the least cloud coverage. You see here this is the mosaic from different images that are taken at different times depending on their cloud cover. The next panel here on the left is for configuration. If you want to look at examples of satellite imagery for a specific topic, you can choose one of the themes from this list and you will get a list of highlights. These are individual place marks that you can click into and each of them features a short explanation. You can also create your own configurations. More on this in the blog post linked in the description below. The next panel is called Data Collections. Here you can choose the data set and the level of processing that you want to use. Typically, you will want to use Sentinel-2 true color imagery of a specific date. Level 1 data is closer to the raw data. It doesn't have atmospheric corrections applied. And level 2 data is already processed to enable you to come as close to the reflected signal as possible. It has terrain correction, radiometric and atmospheric correction applied. Sentinel-1 is a radar sensor. It sees through clouds, but the interpretation of the image is not trivial. Sentinel-3 has an optical image every day, but the resolution is lower. Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 mosaics are seamless datasets available across large areas with clouds filtered and the signal equalized between the individual acquisitions. Sentinel-5B is for monitoring the atmosphere, including tracking air pollution, but the resolution of this sensor is lower than for other satellites. Finally, 
you can also access digital elevation models created based on satellite data. Coming back to Sentinel-2 imagery. We can use different visualizations that are available in the Layers panel. You can select between various composites and each of them has a short description. You can also directly edit the image color settings here. And therefore you can experiment with different kinds of visualizations. It is also possible to directly edit the code we use for visualization, including adding your own calculations. In the bottom of this bar, there is a small menu for directly changing the image properties themselves using gain gamma and the colors. And it's also possible to hide the layer completely if you want to compare with the background image or to share the scene that you are viewing by generating a short URL. This link will take the viewer directly to this place and this time in Copernicus browser. In addition to the visualize panel, we also have the search panel. This allows you to directly download individual data products for a study area. You can apply various filters. You can query data from a specific time frame. You can look at thumbnail images of the individual results, and you can download them one by one. Finally, the download button is here in the right. It allows you to export image products in various resolutions. Basic resolution is typically for sharing in social media, 600 by 400 pixels. Analytical download is also compatible with GIS processing. It offers a selection of resolutions, coordinate systems, and bands, both from visualizations and the raw data. And finally, high resolution print download allows you to set the image size and the image resolution in DPI, and therefore you can download very large imagery that is also ready for creating a print. Additionally, you can always refer to our in-app tutorial. This will guide you through the browser in some easy steps. Start experimenting with Copernicus Browser. If you want to find more information, we have detailed tutorials on our YouTube channel and on the Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem blog. Thank you for watching.